Okay, good morning to everyone. Um, this is the session about citizen science and uh, the Open Citizen Science Project and more specifically our recommendations, uh, the first version. Um, I suspect that most of you in the room speak Finnish, but since this is uh, live streamed, we will uh, stick to English uh, for the first part of the program. So uh, we'll be spending together the before noon. Um, I'll show you the program. How does this work? I'll just use this. So um, my name is Heidi Laine. I'm the uh, project manager for the Open Citizen Science Project. Uh, also the, the core person for the Open Knowledge Finland Open Science uh, Working Group. <clears throat> and I'll be uh, telling first a little bit about the, the project in general and then the uh, stakeholder recommendations. Uh, then uh, Konsta Hakkonen uh, will give you a, a somewhat different point of view to citizen science, um, more uh, focused on infrastructure and research environments, especially from the point of view of a biodiversity map project that was um, conducted by Open, Open Knowledge Finland. Um, then we'll have a brief discussion. Uh, Susanna Oones has kindly uh, promised to give her comments and, and view on the topic. And then we have a short break and change language from English to, to Finnish and uh, continue with uh, stakeholder presentations. Uh, first we have Toni Suutari from, from Kotus. Um, I don't know the official translation in English, um, Center for National Languages or something like along those lines. And then uh, Timo Pyhälähti from the Envy Base initiative. Then there's a uh, little time for open discussion and at 12.30 we close. Um, but even, even though there I have uh, marked in the program um, time slots for discussion, please feel free to comment and ask at, at any point, at least during my, my presentation. The other presenters can um, speak for themselves and, and tell, tell you what they, they prefer. So let's move forward with, the, with our project, the Open Citizen Science Project. Uh, the project um, is commissioned and, and funded by the Open Science and Research Initiative, um, which is behind this uh, entire event. You have probably been, uh, at least some of you, participating already yesterday and, and on, on Monday. Uh, so the, uh, the initiative approached Open Knowledge um, and asked whether we would be interested in, in, in uh, doing a um, quite small-scale project on, on citizen science, um, finding out about the, the status in Finland, uh, mapping stakeholders, and, and especially uh, the, the recommendations were something that that the initiative uh, found interesting. Um, well, wh what's the motivation behind this? Um, already the, the Finnish Open Science Roadmap, which was published in 2014, uh, mentions citizen uh, engagement and, and participation uh, as something that is part of, of the concept of open science. Uh, one of the goals named in the roadmap is that open science creates new opportunities for researchers, decision makers, business, public bodies and, and citizens. And, and after 2014, um, the uh, citizen science phenomena, if you will, has, has grown ever stronger. And it is present also in the uh, European Commission uh, Open Science Agenda. Um, and I was glad to notice that the, the wording on the, at least on the draft Open Science Agenda is, 
is quite ambitious and, and the goal is to bring citizens to the, really to the core of, of research um, <coughs> into setting the agendas and, and uh, participants um, during the entire life cycle uh, of, of a research process, not just as uh, end users. As I already uh, said, uh, touched upon the, the goals of the Open Citizen Science Project, but here they are again. So, so we have tried to create discussion on citizen science. The, it's been bubbling under for, for a while, and, and there's a lot of things that fall under the, the umbrella or, or the, the headline of citizen science, but still often um, these discussions are not linked, and the, the citizen science concept is not necessarily used. Um, of course, it's not always absolutely necessary to have a successful uh, citizen science uh, style um, action. Uh, you, you can have that without having the, the label, but um, for the big picture it would be very um, useful to, to connect these dots and to have a, have a form a, a holistic view. Um, also, we've, we've tried to, in, in our uh, small capacity, to create new understanding on, on citizen science, um, to find out about uh, what it is and, and could be, and then uh, provide recommendations for national level policy action, and that's what we are discussing in further detail today. The project will run to the end of uh, this year, and uh, December uh, is the month when we will be um, uh, drafting the, or, or writing the, the final report where we will um, give a, like a, a final version of, of the uh, recommendations, even though um, since it is open knowledge that is doing this, it's very um, it is in our nature to to have these kind of open and ongoing processes. So, by no means, the report and the end of this project is is not the end of the discussion. So, uh, the starting points for the project, the kind of premises, were um, well. First, I am not uh, personally wasn't very familiar with citizen science uh, before. Uh, taking on this project. Um, I am a doctoral student at the University of Helsinki in economic and social history, so I'm a half social scientist, half, half humanist, and I'm specialized in, in research integrity and, and ethics, so I, I personally needed to first find out what citizen science is. Um, and um, so I took as a starting point the uh, the ten principles of citizen science uh, drafted by the the European uh, Coalition. Uh, so, so sorry, the European Citizen Science Alliance. Yes, ICSA. It's always hard to remember the the full names behind these abbreviations. Um, one of the things that we are doing in the in this project is translating these ten principles uh, into Finnish. They haven't been previously translated, and and ICSA aims at at having them translated in as many uh, languages as, as possible. Well, uh, first of all, they, um, they state that citizen science is a flexible concept. Well, it's a good starting point, but not the uh, easiest one. Um, citizen science projects actively involve citizens in scientific endeavors, and citizen science projects have a genuine science outcome. So it's not just a for the sake of uh, having a hobby. It's, uh, the goal is really to, to produce new knowledge and new understanding. Um, well, these were the citizen science projects that I was familiar with. They are <coughs> wonderful projects, uh, very, very uh, successful, but uh, maybe a little um, one-directional. <laughs> so um, when we started to do this, we, we the, the, one of the first things that we, we wanted to establish and understand is wh why it's good that open knowledge is doing it. What, what is it that we can bring to the table that um, some other uh, actor perhaps cannot 
and and it's the um, the the way of of working the the open engaging way. So it was very natural for us to to um, start to consider how to make citizen science something that is less on the left side here as a, this one one directional. Um, not even even a dis discussion necessarily, but but more the situation on on the right right hand side of of the picture, where where all of the the actors and and participants <coughs> uh, exchange um, and and uh, cooperate and influence e each other. Um, open knowledge likes to call itself do tank. Um, versus think tanks, uh, bottom-up way of working is very important to us. Um, we have a lively community, we wanted to engage that community in this process and, and also to use open by default methods. So um, all of the documentation of, of the project uh, is, is openly available on the project drive. And the, the, the doing <laughs> versus thinking um, part came from from the uh, inclusion of the biodiversity map project into into this project. Uh, Consta will be explaining that um, in in further detail a little bit later. And uh, we have a um, our, our main meeting place or platform for the the uh, open knowledge, open open science community is the uh, Open Science Finland Facebook group where we have. Uh, try to uh, to um, make um, uh, to generate discussion on the on this team and and bring uh, documents at at uh, at certain intervals uh, in order to to get the the opinion and and the temperature of the the community on these issues. Um, the discussion has the the level of, of discussion has, has varied, but, but at least everyone has had a chance to, to say their word. Um, we also uh, launched, a, um, for example, um, a micro-article call, uh, which has produced six mi micro-articles on different topics. They will be uh, published on the uh, Open Science and Research Initiatives, uh, Porti, um, web magazine. <laughs> during this year? Yeah, uh, during this year and, and they will also be included in the, in the final report. So, uh, what are the recommendations then? That's what we are gathered around here to, today. So, um, what I'm going to present to you are the, the, um, the findings from, from the stakeholder engagement part. And Consta will be, be telling you about the, his observations um, using the, the biodiversity map as a sort of a case. So uh, we had a, at the Science Center Heureka, we had a stakeholder workshop and, and many of these uh, ideas and recommendations come, come from there. Um, here are some of the, the actors that we have heard during the, the process, science centers and museums, um, all kinds of uh, citizen-oriented uh, uh, activities. Uh, metal detecting community was was one that I found very interesting um, personally. Um, Susanna will uh, tell you a few words today about the microhistory wiki project. <coughs> My data is something that is is very topical in open knowledge at the moment that there are many links to, uh, to science and, and research and especially citizen science there, uh, genetic family research, well biodiversity map we have already mentioned, open street map, Baltic app, archives, libraries, literature so societies, citizen observatories, uh, researchers of course, they are a major stakeholder in, in this context, um, schools, Wikimedia, and uh, governmental advisory bodies, um, especially the ones that I, I know closest, the, the advisory uh, body on research integrity, um, committee for public information, 
and uh, the Council for, for uh, Finnish Academies. Um, well, um, when you start drafting recommendations, you of course have to have uh, some kind of a vision of, of the place where you want to go. So um, this is what um, I, I came up with based, based on the discussions with, with the, the stakeholders. Um, so we want to have science that tackles grand challenges like, for example, uh, immigration, uh, climate change uh, head on without tripping on disciplinary or meritocratic boundaries, which uh, in my view happens too often in the research community. Science that has impact on the local level. Uh, uh, citizen, I, I see that citizen science could be a really uh, powerful tool for evidence-based decision making because it could uh, engage all uh, of the, the three kind of main groups, uh, research community, citizens and, and decision makers into the same process. Uh, public support for publicly funded research, uh, also research, uh, resource efficiency at certain points. Of course, this is not the case for, for all uh, designs or all citizen science instances because sometimes building the, the necessary infrastructure uh, can be time and uh, and resource consuming, so, so this is not, not to be the, the main motivation, but it is, it is one of them, and in, in some cases it, it really creates savings. And um, lastly, design serendip serendipity and innovation through open knowledge exchange and communication between stakeholders. So I have uh, two general headings for the recommendations, general recommendations and then more kind of practical recommendations for the national level. Well first, uh, citizen science should be considered as a value instead of just a method or research design. Because um, uh, all, there's been uh, during the past few years a lot of discussion about uh, science communication, research communication and evidence-based decision making uh, and so forth. And, and um, I have the feeling that these discussions have existed a little bit in, in, in silos and, and, and especially in the open science discussions. This is something that hasn't, in my personal view, have, has not been addressed enough. And the, the recent uh, events, for example, in, in the United States, uh, in the Great Britain and, and soon possibly also in, in Europe. Mm, uh, kind of un underline the importance of having an informed citizenry and, and, uh, and I think the research community uh, could do a, a lot more in, in informing the public and making the, the, the vast knowledge that we are sitting on um, uh, more accessible and more understandable. So, so all research projects and researchers should find out their societal relevance. For like a cosmologist, um, it might not be so self-evident, but you can always try to communicate what you do and the importance of it, even though if it's, it's not immediate and self-evident. Um, I like the idea of six degrees of open science instead of boxing open science into open data and open access and so forth. At least from a researcher's point of view, this is more useful way of understanding how, you, uh, how one could open one's own, own work. And we could have a, a similar concept for, for citizen science, six, six degrees or, or th 306 degrees or, or 1060 degrees, but still there, there is a degree of, of, uh, of uh, societal re relevance and citizen engagement in, in every research setting and question. Um, so citizen science is an umbrella concept similarly to open science, something that, that every researcher needs to kind of take a, a stand on. Uh, uh, second one, citizen science should be considered as a value instead of 
Is, is that the same? Okay, I have accidentally duplicated. Um, the, the second one was that, that it would be more useful to concentrate on knowledge than on roles and people, because we are all citizens. So, um, from a, when you look at it from a certain point of view, uh, we all have different roles uh, in our daily lives. So, um, so I don't know if it's, it's, it's very useful to, to fo focus on. I mean, especially the research community is, is very fixated on, on titles and, and merits. So I don't see that working very well in the, in the context of citizen science. Uh, we should recognize multidisciplinarity as a basic requirement for citizen science. Uh, because even even if the goal of the project is um, to understand some natural f phenomenon, um, it is important to understand the motivations of the citizen participation pa participants and how to engage them, uh, and so forth. And there you need um, broader understanding. And uh, and one solution is is to uh, bring different people from different backgrounds, from the human sciences, from, from the natural sciences together. Or even better, in, in my view, to start including elements from these two cultures to kind of cross-pollinating them, to have, have natural scientists read f philosophy, for example, to, to have um, human scientists, um, to, to train human scientists in, in data science, for example. Uh, and this is very important to, to me as a, as, a, as a human scientist and, and as we are speaking English, uh, the word science is, is too often understood very narrowly to, uh, as, as just meaning natural science and, and I would really like to see that uh, become ancient history and, and have uh, science uh, as, a, as a broader concept also in the, in the in the English language, because that is, is, is the language of, of scholarship to a large extent, to a growing extent. Uh, here are some, some tools in the citizen science tool, toolbox that, that don't uh, bow down to, to disciplinary uh, boundaries that, that can serve all kinds of research questions and, and settings. Uh, this is, of course, a somewhat painful um, thing to, to digest, especially for, for researchers, because many researchers um, have certain um, preconceived ideas of, of the public, that it is ignorant, um, that science is, is objective and, and, and better than, than other forms of knowledge, that facts speak for themselves without the need of kind of translating and, and making an effort to communicate things and, and that boundaries between scientific disciplines are something that should be protected. So I want to challenge all of these notions. Then the more um, practice-oriented recommendations. Uh, we should have an open and inclusive research infrastructure um, that would um, uh, that would ser serve also users that are not uh, affiliated with a certain research institution. We could build these um, upon existing uh, infrastructures and, and platforms. I have here um, mentioned three, but but of course there there might be other solutions. Uh, but this is just to give an give an idea of what is out there. Um, incorporating data literacy and skills training to all levels of education. And, and this is something that um, I feel is very well in line with the, with the new national curriculum um, where programming is brought to, to um, elementary schools from the first grade up. So why not also data skills? Um, Something that was brought up in the stakeholder workshop is an awareness raising campaign about citizen science and, uh, and the, com the communal libraries were seen as a suitable place for this. Uh, because there, there is a lot of 
enthusiasm and untapped potential uh, out there at the grassroots. Uh, people are are um, want to share the knowledge that they have, but but they don't know the the paths for that. Um, regulation and ownership issues were is is something that was often mentioned as as being uh, confusing and, and difficult. So. So um, this doesn't necessarily re require new legislation, but uh, maybe new ways of of um, of uh, translating that le legislation into into practice, and maybe new new models and and standards. Uh, uh, cross boundary research should be funded more, the, the current funding mechanisms are not um, agile enough um, and here cross-boundary research should be understood in the, in the broadest possible uh, sense, crossing all kinds of boundaries between academia and, and society and, and between um, actors in academia and in society. And, and uh, citizen scientists or researchers uh, should be of course rewarded just like uh, researchers expect to be rewarded f uh, from their work with monetary com compensation or, or merit or, or whatever. Um, sometimes um, being able to pa participate in the scientific process uh, can be a very, um, a very significant reward for citizen scientists. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like a, a, a shiny coin or anything like that. Um, Ensuring quality and excellence is it's a, it's a big question mark. How, how can we do that when we are working with with uh, uh, non-professionals, uh, people who haven't received any researcher training? So um, this this needs to be um, worked on. Uh, then more briefly. Uh, the three last ones, a citizen science marketplace where one could pro promote projects, find projects, find participants, uh, cooperators, data and share practices, that's always important. Um, practices and platforms for citizen administration of personal data. There are, I know that there are some my data experts in the room so please feel free to, to comment if, if you want. Uh, and then a very specific uh, recommendation lastly because there has been some challenges with the, the biobanks in, in collecting consent um, and one idea that came up was that the, in, the, in the consent model uh, data and the consent for the data and for the specimen might, it might be useful to separate them. Then the League of European uh, Universities have also come up with their own recommendations for uh, a specific uh, actors and, and bodies and, and here um, are, are what they recommend for universities. I thought that this might uh, interest this particular crowd. Uh, but you can find the, the whole uh, report on the little uh, website. Uh, the, the link is very long. Well, these, uh, actually I forgot to mention that these slides are, are available online. Uh, OKF.fi uh, slash CS uh, uh, What's that in English? Alaviva <laughs> recommendations. Um, so there, there you can get the link, but you can also, if you Google Lero and Citizen Science, you will find it very easily. So I, I strongly recommend that you, if your interest is, as, as I uh, suspect that you are, <laughs> since you are sitting here or, or watching the stream, um, go and, and check that out. That's, that's something that we will uh, also take into uh, consideration when we. Um, when we uh, formulate the, the final version of the, the recommendations and, um, and the report. So that's it. Uh, I'm a little over... No, I, I think uh, I'm pretty good, <laughs> actually, surprisingly. Uh, so um, you can, if you, if you want to comment something right away, uh, please feel free. Um, I will ask Consta to come for word. Uh.
and we can also uh, discuss more after Konsta's presentation. And one question. Yeah. Yes, uh, there was about these uh, rights issues uh, regarding the open citizen science collected uh, data. So, practically, is there any uh, ideas or viable solutions uh, for such data collection that has happened already and there has nobody ever thought about any, anything regarding rights and there might be data from 20 years? Uh, and now it's uh, not perhaps possible to open the data because nobody ever asked mm. if it could or should be opened. So in any cases that you have possibly heard where something has been done, kind of overruling decision, yes, let's open this. <laughs> I personally don't have any, any cases, so I kind of direct my look towards the people in the room. You have a yes, Timo Kunala is Suke. Uh, uh, I'm not speaking for, uh, on behalf of Suke on this one because I know that uh, in Luonnon Tieteen Keskusmuseo Luomus National History Museum of uh, Finland uh, they have been tackling with these issues for a long time because there is uh, observations and uh, uh, images of birds etc. with uh, a set of copyright and so on and there is a variety of uh, answers which are valid, so there's no uh, overruling uh, things, uh, even actually to my understanding intended, but it's more like a case by case basis, and I would recommend contacting Kari Lahti on this one. Mm -hmm.